Here I am today wearing my USA versus Canada World Juniors shirt, thinking we're going to set up an epic semi-final matchup, but only one of them is going to actually advance. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of Habs Hockey Report right here on the All Habs Hockey Magazine YouTube channel, part of Rocket Sports Media. You can find us at home uh, on our website, allhabs.net. Also, follow us at All Habs on Twitter. So glad that you're here with us today. My name is Amy Johnson, and I'm your host of the show every Thursday. I'm also the lead correspondent over at our sister site, ahlreport.com, where we provide credentialed coverage of the Laval Rocket and All Habs prospects. And uh, we're glad you're here today. If you are a longtime viewer, or perhaps this is the first time that you've stopped by the channel and seen the show because you're just hungry for some Habs hockey to come back, welcome aboard. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't done so already because we are really counting down the weeks until uh, the meat and potatoes of the season really starts and we get into rookie camps and so forth and we're going to have exclusive interviews coming your way here on the show lots of news lots of coverage not like anything you're going to see on any other channel and we don't want you to miss a single episode so tap that subscribe button and let's get underway We're still in the depths of August, so Habs news and Habs happenings is still pretty quiet. I expect to see in the next couple of weeks, by the end of the month, we might start to see some activity ramp up uh, with Kent Hughes and and other news surrounding the roster and so forth. Uh, But one exciting thing did happen to happen this week. Happened to happen, yeah, okay. Uh, And that is the announcement that single game tickets go on sale September 6th. That means hashtag is it October yet? We are getting close, my friends. Uh, The hockey season is just around the corner and the availability of single game tickets going on sale September 6th. The Canadians announced that this week. And why is that significant? Well, it's A, here at All Habs on our Facebook page, which if you haven't checked out that community, facebook.com slash All Habs. But on our Facebook page, on our Twitter account, on our Rocket Sports text line, you name it, people have been clamoring. When do individual single game tickets go on sale? I want to, you know, now that the schedule's out, I want to, I've got my dates marked for which games I want to attend. And so fans are super excited that September 6th will be just around the corner. You can get your hands on some single game tickets if you're not a season ticket holder or a a mini bundle uh, ticket package holder. Also, I'll give you a tip here as well. Here at All Habs and Rocket Sports, every year uh, we have a partnership with a third-party ticket seller. Don't go to Ticketmaster. Don't go to StubHub. We have a special relationship with a third-party ticket seller that our fans and listeners and readers and viewers every year tell us they have great seats at rock bottom, unbelievable prices, uh, and and that the transactions are seamless and smooth and just that they go back to this same seller every single year through All Habs and Rocket Sports. So in the upcoming weeks, as we get closer to when tickets are going to go on sale, keep an eye here on this channel and here on this show because I'll be giving you a special link for you to go and purchase Habs tickets at prices that you will not find anywhere else uh, from a reputable third-party seller and courtesy of your friends here at All Habs Hockey Magazine and Rocket Sports. So keep an eye out for that. Can't wait to bring that to you because it means that hockey season is just about to start. In addition, some breaking news uh, that just came out today is the annual red-white scrimmage at the Bell Center uh, at the end of 
training camp uh, has actually been announced. It's going to be held on Sunday, September 25th at 3 p.m. Uh, at the Bell Center. So, you know, if you if you want to get your chance to get early eyes on guys like Kirby Doc, on Uri Slavkovsky, on Evgeny Dadunov, uh, that would be the time to do it. It's always Fans always seem to really enjoy the red-white scrimmage. The players seem to have fun with it, too, uh, getting their first taste of, of, a, of a warm Bell Center rea- uh, welcome and, and reaction. Tickets will be going on sale for that uh, early in September. Uh, looks like September 3rd through 25th uh, are general public. There'll be a couple of pre-sale opportunities for season ticket holders and so forth before that. But keep an eye out. Uh, red-white scrimmage tickets are also going to be going on sale early in September. I thought that I was going to be setting up, uh, you know, a, a Friday semifinal clash between Team USA and Team Canada. And uh, Team Czechia pulling out an enormous upset in the quarterfinals late, late, late on Wednesday night. Uh, Team USA and Team Canada both uh, so far had been undefeated in this World Junior Tournament. Uh, Canada still undefeated as, as they won over the Swiss after what was kind of a tight start for Team Canada. The U.S., however, falling to Team Czechia Captain Jan Mishak, Habs prospect Jan Mishak, uh, soon to be Laval Rocket forward Jan Mishak, uh, scoring the opening goal for Czechia, uh, and uh, you know it was it was a tight game through through the first period. Second period, Team Czechia really seemed to ramp up uh, the pressure, and once they took the lead and extended it. There really was not looking back at all for them. Uh, This was an enormous upset uh, and good for Team Czechia, I have to say. Uh, You know, there was, uh, we saw Luke Hughes uh, had a bit of a a knee-on-knee collision in the first period, tried to test it through more than a couple of shifts in the second period and never quite looked comfortable. He definitely looked like he was favoring that leg. Uh, and I I absolutely have to question whether it was a good idea in in a in an elimination kind of game, in an elimination kind of situation. I question whether it was a good idea to keep allowing him to test it or just make the coaching decision to pull him off uh, and and readjust your lines and be as aggressive as you can be uh, instead of having a forward who's not able to obviously give 100% physically. So uh, whether or not that actually was the contributing factor or, you know, sometimes it's not great when you get to the quarters and you haven't lost a game and you haven't ever trailed yet in the tournament. This was the first time that the U.S. was trailing and sometimes not having that experience as a new team that's come together within a a, a week or two and not having that experience of having to get together, refocus and, and climb back into a game, sometimes that can be at your disadvantage. And so there were a number of factors that went into this, but that's the answer is uh, Team USA is out. They're done. They're going home. And so that means Jan Mishak and Team Czechia advance to the semifinals and they will be facing Team Canada uh, on uh, on Friday for that semifinal matchup. Jan Mishak, my goodness, what a tournament this young man has had. I've said it before. Uh, I loved his play uh, two years ago when he had the special exception with the with the CHL to play with Laval for a few months during the COVID-19 OHL shutdown. Uh, he looked tremendous at that point. This past year with the Hamilton Bulldogs, he was absolutely lights out. He has really grown and, and developed his game even more. Uh, I am greatly looking forward to him being part of the Laval Rocket this fall. But this tournament, he has hands down been the best Habs prospect. He leads Czechia with four goals and six points in his five games. And he's a plus three on the differential. I mean, he's just, he's a captain. He's wearing the C. He's got those leadership abilities, which is great. But he is also kind of putting his money where his mouth is. And uh, he's really showing why he deserves to be there. In fact, all five Habs prospects have advanced to the semifinal round. We talk about Jan Mishak advancing with Team Czechia. Uh, he'll be playing Joshua Waugh and possibly Riley Kidney for Team Canada. Joshua Waugh, uh, after starting 
starting this the the tournament on the top line with Connor Bedard and Mason McTavish. He's he's now adjusted down to the third line, uh, and it seems to be a bit of a better fit for him. Um, however. The centerman on that line has been Ridley Gregg, and he went out of Canada's last game with an injury uh, and didn't return. And so Ridley Gregg's status for the semifinal is still up in the air. Could that mean uh, that's a big loss for 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 Canada for sure if he is if he's unable to go uh, because he has been one of the biggest contributing factors uh, off aside from that top line of Bedard and McTavish uh, on on Team Canada's roster. However. If Ridley Gregg can't go, does that provide an opportunity for Riley Kidney to finally get some playing time? He has been a healthy scratch for the bulk of the tournament, so maybe we will see Riley Kidney get some playing time as well on Friday. That is still yet to be determined. Uh, Finland also advancing. Uh, You have Czechia versus Canada, but of course we'll have the perennial clash of the Swedes versus the Finns in the other semifinal. Uh, So that means Oliver Kapanen and Pateri Nurmi uh, will be take will be playing with Team Finland taking on Team Sweden. Captain getting his first goal of the season early uh, of the tournament earlier this week. So an exciting couple of semifinal matchups ready to go for this weekend. Uh, it'll be very, it, it'll be interesting to see who's going to make it to the gold medal game uh, and who's going to come out on top with this tournament. Uh, big upset with the U.S. leaving. And congrats, I want to say this, congratulations to Team Latvia for, for doing something that I that I doubt they thought they were going to do when uh, that anyone thought they were going to do when they entered this tournament with Russia being removed and banned, uh, making it uh, to the quarterfinals. I mean, that's just it's absolutely tremendous for them. You could see the sheer joy, and it's so it's one of the things that just makes the World Juniors so much fun to watch. Uh, a team, however, that did not make. The quarterfinals, which I think surprised some, was Team Slovakia, and uh, they were eliminated. Uh, they were eliminated after group play and did not qualify to move ad- move ahead to the quarterfinals. Um, it's interesting because they were a very Slovakia was a very strong team back in December. Um, however, back in December they also had a guy named Yuri Slavkovsky and a guy named Philip Mesar playing for Team Slovakia. Those two, along with and the Montreal Canadiens, all came to an agreement that they would not return to the World Junior Tournament for the August postponement. And that left Slovakia without a couple of pretty big guns uh, in in their forward line. Slovakia still looked good. Um, I think when we see them come back in December for the 2023 tournament, I think we'll see uh, a, a much maybe stronger team, but certainly a disappointment for Team Slovakia that they did not make it to the quarterfinal round. However, they did have things to celebrate. And uh, people have been wondering, you know, I thought Uri Slavkovsky was coming to Montreal in August. Where is he? Well, have no fear. Uh, according to to reports from Slavkovsky, he will be arriving in Montreal this week to get settled in and start his routine and start training uh, and get ready for rookie camp in just a few weeks. So he is coming. But there was a good reason why he needed to hang out in Slovakia just a little bit longer after his training uh, post-draft than maybe was intended. And that is because not only did he get the Best Player Under 20 award, uh, the Pavel Dimitra Award, which, okay, absolutely, for, for Slovakia, hand that to him. Absolutely. That, would, that absolutely makes sense. He also got the Joseph Galanka Award, which is the award for the best forward in Slovakian hockey uh, for this past season. That's not too shabby either for this young man. But if that wasn't enough, Juraj Slavkovsky was also awarded the Slovakia Player of the Year last week in Bratislava. In Bratislava. I mean, this 18 years old, under 20 player of the year for Slovakia, best forward of the year for Slovakia, player of the year for Slovakia. Keep in mind, that's not just under 20 guys. This is any Slovakia player playing in any league, including the NHL. Um, what a tremendous uh, trio of of accolades for, for Uri Slavkovsky. It's an exciting year for him, I have to say. Um, and it just goes to show 
how much the people of Slovakia, the the media and his peers in Slovakia think of his abilities and his talents and his skills. Uh, and it's just very exciting for Habs fans to see that this young man who has really kind of uh, taken the hockey world by storm this summer uh, is getting set to come to Montreal and begin his journey with the Montreal Canadiens. It is absolutely thrilling. And congratulations to Yuri Slavkovsky. We're going to keep the Habs Fan Hub short and sweet this week. Uh, I do have a feedback forum question for you. I mentioned that uh, it's just going to be just a few weeks now until rookie camps start and the, the rookie prospect tournament starts in Buffalo uh, for the Montreal Canadiens. So we're getting there. We're getting close. But it's that time of the, the late, deep summer that you're probably really starting to... I mean, thankfully, the World Juniors has been on. But, uh, you know, you might really be starting to get itchy for some good hockey to watch and maybe it's that time of year in the lazy hazy days of summer that on uh you know on a weeknight or a weekend afternoon or something you just toss on your favorite hockey movie have a beverage grab some snacks and toss on your favorite hockey movie get get that get that hockey fix so that's my question for you this week what's your favorite hockey movie there are so many of them out there i mean you've got slapshot you've got goon you've got the mighty ducks you've got miracle you've got, there are so many hockey movies out there. Which one's your favorite? Leave that comment down below. We'll read your answers next week on the show. Last week, I we talked about uh, the fact that the Hockey News had put out a poll to their fans asking if the NHL should move to individual player goal songs as opposed to team goal songs. And so the question last week was, if you had the opportunity to select your own individual goal song what would it be? Uh, we actually had uh, Jay Falado answered and said, uh, for whom the bell tolls, which that's a great choice. That's that's a very good choice. Um, uh, I would say for me, it would kind of, I love music. I love, there are not many genres of music that I don't like. There's not many eras of music I don't like. But I think if I had to pick a couple that I would be choosing from. It would kind of depend on what kind of fun mood I was in. Could it be Fight for Your Right to Party by the Beastie Boys? Maybe. Or could it be Ballroom Blitz by Sweet? I think that might be the one I go with. That would be pretty fun. Uh, you still have time to answer that question as well. If you want to answer that in addition to this week's question, just leave those comments uh, down in the section below and I'll be sure to read them next week on the show. We're here every week to get you all set for the season ahead, bringing you all the latest Habs news and information as it happens all summer long. If you missed last week's show, be sure to check it out right here and I'll see you again next Thursday for a new episode of Habs Hockey Report.